This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, uh, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today we'll discuss a very interesting case where I had an unexpected intraoperative event and uh, let's see how I could manage that. So this is a 65 year old gentleman innocuous looking cataract it's cortical cataract so i begin my surgery i'm making my two side port incisions the surgery is being done under topical anesthesia so i'm using intracameral anesthesia the so first the air goes in then the intracameral anesthetic goes in And then as I'm trying to put in the dye, you can see that the chamber is shallow and the iris is trying to come out. And this is something a cause for concern. So then I bend the needle and I'm just irrigating out the dye. And before making the main incision, I always want to pressurize the anterior chamber by using some OVD. I'm using viscoat in this case. Stabilizing the globe with my other hand using the globe stabilizing ring. Posterior limbal groove is created followed by a 2.8 millimeter entry into the eye so i have a, a decent size intracorneal tunnel as well so now there is that air bubble which is inside the eye and i want to remove it by just purging out i want to use viscoelastic and now you can see suddenly the iris starts to come out so this was not at all comforting for me i check the speculum pressure whether it is more release it a little bit the first question which I ask him is, what are the medications he's taking on? And, and he replied that he's just taking antihypertensives, nothing else. Now I'm using adrenaline just to hope that the pupil dilates a little bit. I'm just trying to repose the iris. I'm not trying to put in anything. By doing so, some of the OVD is let out. Once the eye has become a little bit soft, over that I put viscoat. So that has pulled the iris back now. The iris is looking a little bit stable. At this point, I'm really worried whether this case is going to behave just like an IFIS and I'm going to have a problem. I'm checking the pressure now, whether the pressure is high. So is this any a soft eye or a hard eye? It looks like it is not at all a hard eye, it's a soft eye. So maybe just the iris is misbehaving and that was my impression. So my mind is ticking now, what strategy should I go in? I don't know whether I'll have more problems as I proceed with the surgery or should I take any precautions now itself. I have decided that I'm going to go in with my B-hex ring and treat this case as I would treat an IFIS case. So for that I would want a device which is going to just stabilize the floppy iris. So I'm presuming that this is a case of IFIS and planning accordingly. The idea is I just don't want to find myself in a more difficult situation in between the surgery. The rexus is still not yet done. So this is a right opportunity for me to use a BHEX ring as a prophylaxis. It's not compulsory. To be on the safer side, I thought I will use it. So I'm trying to put in the BHEX ring now. The iris has again come out. I go in through the side port using a Sinskuke just to position the ring in a better way and the patient is constantly moving his eyes. So there's another issue which I need to deal with. Chamber is a little bit shallow so I'm worried that the excessive instrumentation is going to cause a little bit of a problem. To make the patient less anxious and probably a little bit more comfortable, I'm injecting 1 ml of lignocaine subconjunctivally or subtenance just to ensure that he much more comfortable. So once it is done, time to place in the ring. The first notches are placed and as I'm trying to place the second pair of notches, you can see the first pair of notches have disengaged. So not an issue at all, but again I need to go back and reposition this first before attempting to fix the remaining pair of notches. Both the notches are engaged. I am convinced about that and now is the time to fix the last remaining pair of notches by switching hands and uh, going through the other side port. So finally we have a situation 
where the BX ring is in place and this uh, gives me enough confidence and solace. Since I'm expecting a relatively soft cataract, it's a cortical cataract, I want to have a rexus which is no less than 5.5 mm because I want the management of the nucleus as easy as possible. As we can expect, the iris is not going to behave well. So I want to finish the job of nucleus management as quickly as possible without uh, using much of a fluid. So that was my idea. So I want to err on a slightly bigger side. Because the chamber was shallowing, came out and I want to inject OVD. At this moment, area of uh, Desmond's membrane uh, comes in view. We can see this is the uh, Desmond's membrane which is detached. So I need to be mindful of this part until the completion of surgery. So my goal is uh, not to have this area enlarged. So now I decide to avoid the main incision and go in with the side port using a micro forceps uh, to complete the rexus. The rexus is taken care of now and uh, so it is sufficiently decent sized. In softer cataracts, hydrodissection and hydro procedures are extremely important. Uh, so don't want to use large amount of fluids here. Just a little bit of gentle decompression to purge out the viscoelastic. And then using very small amount of fluid, I inject the BSS under the anticapsule and could see a beautiful wave and immediately I decompress. So thankfully, the iris has started to behave well. I'm not sure whether it's entirely because of the ring, but definitely things look much more settled here now. It looks like everything is under control. Just go and check whether uh, there are no cortical capsular adhesions. I just have a habit of rotating the nucleus once. Uh, once it is done, time to do fake emulsification. So now in this case, I am expecting a very soft nucleus. So I need to be concerned about the uh, phaco parameters which I'm going to use here. Typically, when we enter, initially it will be in a epinucleus mode to clear off all the overlying epinucleus and cortex, wherein we're going to use extremely low amount of energy, like just 5% torsional, something like that. Once it is there, we need to chop the nucleus. Uh, in this case, because it's a very soft cataract, I have set the power to 15% longitudinal burst uh, for burying the nucleus. And let's see how the nucleus reacts to this power. Now is the time to uh, bury my phaco tip. So the tip is buried, it's lifted up a little bit. It's very soft nucleus. I could get some sort of a partial chop. The posterior plate is still ticking on. Only the superficial part of the nucleus is separated. So even 15% energy was too much for this. So there is some amount of a, a fragment separation which has happened uh, after the second chop. Now I want to remove this quadrant out of the bag. And I quickly shift to the quadrant removal mode because now we have an adequate amount of space within the bag. The pulling the fragment out of the bag is going to be much more easier. Using just longitudinal sh short burst of energy to engage the nucleus and then pull it out of the bag and emulsify it. So the emulsification part is done by the torsional energy and uh, engaging the nucleus and pulling it out of the bag, I'll be using the longitudinal energy. So I'm using just now 10% energy because I find that it is too soft. So even 10%, you know, you can't get a, a big purchase. But once the heminucleus is out, dealing with these remaining quadrant is not going to be an issue at all because we have enough space to just pull it out of the bag and then eat them in the pupillary plane. So the real problem when dealing with these soft cataracts is uh, during the early part itself, getting the initial chop and then getting that one fragment out of the bag. Once you get that one fragment out of the bag, it's going to be easy. In this case, the other challenge here was uh, the pupil was not very well dilated. But thankfully, what worked for me in this case was I had an adequately large rexus, a good hydro procedure. These are the two most important things which are going to save us when we're dealing with soft cataracts and we're in a sticky situation. The remaining fragments are very easily emulsified. The epinucleus also is emulsified. It's not an issue at all. 
can see that I'm switching my illumination to retroillumination mode. That's what I do usually when I go into the cortex aspiration mode. So you got only two bulbs there. Once the aspiration of the cortex is done, the posterior capsule is flushed with BSS to just remove any remnants of fine fibers of cortex which could be sticking onto the posterior capsule. A single piece hydrophobic lens is loaded and then hydro implantation is being done. Although the implantation was done under BSS itself, I need to remove the BHEX ring. So for this, I'm preferring to again inject OVD into the antechamber and then remove the BX device because I am concerned about the small area of decimates detachment which was near the wound. I don't want to, to entangle it in the BX ring. We removed it and we can see the amount of decimates membrane detachment which is visible. It has remained the same and it has not enlarged much. Now time to remove the OVD which was there and as soon as the ring comes out the iris starts to misbehave a little bit but not much. There's not much of an OVD behind the lens, but still as a customary routine, I just do it and that's it, the case is done. So to begin with, I was skeptical how the case would go because of the immediate iris prolapse which happened after OVD injection. Uh, thankfully, everything went well and the patient continues to do well. To summarize, so these are the take home points when we first see the iris coming out of the main incision or the side port. Number one, check the speculum whether it's pressing on the globe. Number two, ensure that the eye is not hard. That is, we're not dealing with an intrinsic problem like an impending supracoronal hemorrhage or an misdirected aqueous syndrome. As in this case, that was not an issue. The eye was not hard. We know that the iris itself was misbehaving. In such a situation, it's important for us to ensure that we don't work under high infusion pressure. We don't want to put more OVD. And during fake emulsification aspiration also, we want to ensure that the bottle height is uh, not too high. And using a dispersive OVD like Viscoat in little quantities makes the iris behave a little better. It just stays where it is supposed to stay. So that makes a little bit of sense. Number four, when iris starts to come out from the main and the side ports, there's always a risk of inducing these small decimal membrane detachments in an attempt to repose back the iris. So we need to be mindful of them and be taking adequate precautions to ensure that they don't enlarge. Finally, when there is a suspicion of the iris misbehaving, that is, if we're in a situation which mimics something like an IFIS, a pupil expansion or pupil stabilization device like a BHEX, does come in handy. So it's worthwhile using in such tricky situations. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.